miscellaneous movie awards video for the ninth lineal Justin and Tyler movie awards this is where we give once again the awards that you cannot find anywhere else movies we can't believe we loved can't believe we hated expected more from expected less we have the castle award returning of course as the as the un, undefeated champion yeah. of movie awards we've got my I don't get it award and then we've got a couple of new ones that we have never given before but we are going to kick things off with our expectation awards these are the movies that we expected more from and expected less from in 2022 we each select three movies for both of these awards and we go back and forth because let's face it we like the conversation and we know you do too we're going to kick things off with the three movies that we expected more from in 2022 and my man regular tyler is going to kick us off all right so my number three is the gray man Ooh. I'm going back to, if you guys watched it, the Mid-Year Awards, where it was on my top five most anticipated for the rest of the year. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty good movie. Mm -hmm. But with the amount of talent involved, like from the directors, from the actors and stuff, like this should have been like an amazing action movie. I mean, it had my boy Ryan Gosling in it, who hadn't made a movie in like a couple years. Right. And I watched it, and I liked it, but... But I expected, I expected like a 9 out of 10 right. from this. For some reason, maybe in retrospect, I was probably really stupid because it was like a big Netflix action movie and they're, you know, they can be hit or miss. Mm. And, but it was like the most expensive Netflix movie, I think, ever yes. made or something like I that at least true. at the time. So that's, that's why I picked it. You know, it's all about the expectations for this one. Yeah. And with a cast like that, with directors like that, with the money pumped into it, I love action movies. That's that's why I expected more. And part of that too is like that that book series, which is done by Mark Graney, has a really big following. Oh, does it? Like Mark Graney is considered by a lot of his readers as like the heir apparent to like the Lee Childs and the Clive Cusslers and the Tom Clancy's, like kind of like the next one. So I should be reading this person. I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, look, come down, come down to my store and pick up the I first might, one. I might, I might have to. Because um, that, like that, see that he has a lot, a really dedicated reader base. Okay. So when it was first announced that hey, they're doing this as like a Netflix movie, I had people who read him a lot who were saying were very, very excited for that movie. This this movie shouldn't have been something that is just going to come and go. Right. Because that's all it's going to be. I'm never going to think of this movie again after the movie awards. Right. So my number three choice for a movie I expected more from in 2022 was Nope. And my this is like the purest form of this award for me. Mm -hmm. I, I expected because of who was directing the movie and a really good trailer. Very good trailer. Right? Like I now it, it suffered from oversaturation, but yes. a lot of trailers do. But I expected to enjoy it at least close to the level that I've enjoyed his other movies. I'm like, he's attached to it, he's directing it, he didn't just write it, he's actually directing it. Great, like I'm, I'm on board for this. Mm -hmm. And what I wound up getting was a movie that I felt A, was the weakest that he's ever made, which is still relatively high praise because I like his movies a lot. But to me, it's his weakest movie and it's a movie that I think at times struggles to tell a story. So yeah. I was like, oh, I, like, okay, I, I still like this on the level of it's a Jordan Peele. So I'm like, okay, great. But uh, it just, it didn't come anywhere near the admittedly lofty expectations that I had for it. So this was purest form of this award is nope. Yeah, we had a large conversation about it after we saw it together. So I know, I know, I actually know your views on this one. One of the few movies of the year that I know what you think. <laughs> Unless you've rewatched it and changed, but... Yeah, I'm not as big on Jordan Peele, 
I like Us more than Get Out, but mm-hmm. I don't hate Get Out. I don't think Get Out was, like, the best movie of the year, like a lot of people thought. I don't think Peel's, like, the greatest horror director working today, either. But Nope re- disappointed me. It's not as smart as it thinks it is. Right. And there are some great scenes, though. Like, when the when the blood is, like, raining down on the, on the building. So that's a great scene, and there are moments of that that the movie does reach the expectation, but not enough. Not nearly enough. Not near. No. Nope. So, yeah, that's that's a good pick, and I'm not... Can't say I'm surprised. I didn't think of it. I, I, like, I didn't try to predict your, you know, picks or anything on this, but I'm not surprised. But, yeah, it's a good one. Okay, so my number two is Fire Island. Okay. Expectations, Andrew on. If you don't know who that is, you do. Driveways, one of the best movies of whatever oh. year that was. So- I had such high hopes for this. And the thing is, I know this movie isn't meant for me. It's about the gay experience, and I'm only, uh, like, 10% gay, and that's mostly when I'm around you. <laughs> and to be fair, everyone's, like, 10% gay. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, so when I when I say I'm, I'm disappointed by this, I'm, I'm not even commenting on, like, the, the sincerity of the gay experience, because I really have no opinion on that. I'm just looking at it as a rom-com. And is it a, a pretty good rom-com? Sure. But it's not a top of its class rom com. Driveways was a like a top, maybe not top top of its class, but basically a top of its class drama. Mm. Fantastic, heartfelt, authentic. This is this does have some of that authentic uh, authenticity that uh, Driveways had, but it's just such a lesser experience. It doesn't have the great soundtrack. Um, I've seen only two Andrew on movies. I don't think he's made a ton, and he didn't write this, and he I don't think he wrote Driveways either. So I actually would like to see what a an on-written movie would be like. Hmm. Because he might have wrote his first one. It was called Spawn Night or something, but I've never seen that. But yeah, I just... This was a total director expectation. When I saw Andrew Ahn's new movie, I didn't even care what it was about. I, I didn't really know. Right. <laughs> I'm just like, Andrew Ahn, let's go. We you went. Tr- we tr- went, <laughs> but we didn't really go. <laughs> I like that a lot. We went, but we didn't really go. And, I, and I'll throw out another line that you like. That you, because you've said this in previous years, it does flirt with greatness. Uh, I, and I like that line too because you like it, so you'll you'll hear me say that a bunch. But yeah, it does it does flirt with greatness, but it should have been. It, there's no flirting. We should have went right to the sex, <laughs> right? My number two choice is Babylon. So big uh, ensemble cast, headlined by my mother's favorite actor, Brad Pitt. <laughs> Uh, and, I just learned that today. <laughs> just learned that today. Uh, Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie. And it's not that this movie is bad. A Damien Chazelle led Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie joint is never going to be a bad movie. It's going to have some charm. It's going to have some charm and some good performances. Yeah. And because Damien Chazelle is at the lead of it, it's going to be big and bombastic. And it was. But that movie needed to be as long as it was like I needed third service oh. at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Why? Why is this movie as long as it is? And it's one of those, I, I, it, it goes back to a larger problem in Hollywood, which is either that there's no good editors in Hollywood or none of them have any balls. <laughs> because they need to go to these directors and just be like, this movie needs to be an hour shorter than it is. And, and Babylon suffers from that. Look, the, the cast is magnetic. It's it's not a bad movie, but it just it it could have been much more than what it was. And I had the expectation when I saw oh Damien Chazelle, oh Brad Pitt, oh Margot Robbie. Like when I saw that, I'm like oh this is gonna be great, and it it didn't even flirt with it. It it, <laughs> it just it didn't it didn't hit on that level for me while still being a good movie. So Babylon winds up being my number two. Yeah, my my interest in that movie dropped drastically. It was like, okay, there's a lot of talent involved. I'll watch it based just based on that. I didn't even know the story. Right. Like Babylon's a cool name. And then when it comes out, and I finally look into it, and I, I'm like, well, the the plot seems okay. And then I look at the runtime, and I'm like, no, yeah, it's not. I'm not against three hour movies. I watched the Snyder Cut three times. <laughs> okay, I'm not against it. And then a lot of people would argue that Snyder didn't need four hours to tell a superhero story. Okay, sure, but you can go away because you're wrong. Exactly. But I just looked at it and I thought, why does every like auteur need to be, be need their movie to be 
two and a half. Three hours is excessive. Right. For something that isn't a big, big event. You can understand Avatar, even though I still think that would... I don't know. Like, most movies don't need it, but I'm, I'm hypocritical because I'll take... I would take another... I would, would have taken Infinity War for six hours, so I'm a bit of a hypocrite here. Right. But Babylon did not need three. And you're completely right. I didn't even see it. Because you, you messed me like, I'm, watch, I'm going to watch Babylon or whatever. I'm like, you're a better man than me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great line. I, I like. I laugh. I was in public and laughed out loud when you said me. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah. And it had it come out early in the year, maybe I would have. But by that point, I t- tapered off, and I just was not going to invest that amount of time. Okay, so my number one hurts me a lot. Uh, it's a cheater pick, technically. It's called The Forgiven. Which yes. is also on my top five most anticipated movies of the year, mm-hmm. which tells you that you should just never expect anything great ever. There you go. Done. See? <laughs> uh, why, why did I expect more? The McDonough Brothers. Martin or John Michael. It doesn't matter to me. You give me either, because their work's pretty similar. I won't get into my whole McDonough spiel. And this movie was so, it lacked any of his magic. It was okay. Again, it was okay. These These... This part of the awards is not movies we hate. No. Just expected more, and I, I always expect a 9 out of 10 from either of the brothers. Right. Ray Fiennes and... Uh, was it Jessica Chastain in this one? I can't even remember. I think it, I think I it think was. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. So, I mean, that's talent. Right? You yeah. love Jessica Chastain. I do. And I love McDonough. <laughs> Both of them. So anyway, that I sorry, mean, sorry, Rafe. <laughs> <laughs> you're all right too. You're, he actually, you're good like, too. he actually had a pretty good. You had a good year. year. He actually year. did have a good year. That I never considered. Yeah. Um, I'll just keep it at that. It's just McDonough. Yeah. Well, that's, that's <laughs> just it. It's like this. This award is tailor made for situations like that. Yeah. And my number one movie that I expected more from in 2022, drum roll please, Amsterdam. Yeah. So. Why did I expect so much from Amsterdam? Incredible cast, Margot Robbie again. Um, just again, very Maybe good. Maybe the cast. best ensemble cast of the year. Yeah. Maybe. He's, I, I would I would say so. Um, I like David O. Russell's films. Mm-hmm. That trailer, again, same deal with Note. That trailer is bomb. It's a really good trailer. And unfortunately, it was one of those situations where they said, we got to make the trailer for this movie, and they said, play the hits. <laughs> I, I feel like everything, almost everything fun or interesting about this movie can be found in the trailer. So once again, I was, I was enamored by all of this, and I believe in the mid-years, Amsterdam was either, I think it was like my second or third most anticipated movie for the rest of the year at that point. I was like, I cannot wait for this period piece with Christian Bale and John David Washington and Margot Robbie and freaking Rami Malek is in this and Anya Taylor Joy is in this and like I was yeah. ready. I was ready to fall in love with I was ready for this movie to be like a top five movie this year. Yeah. I was really ready for that. And unfortunately, it's less fun than I had hoped it would be. It's less interesting than I think than I think it thinks it is, but less interesting than I had hoped that it was. And again, it's a movie I liked, but when you have top five expectations and it doesn't come anywhere, it doesn't sniff a top five for you, it's like, it has to be here. So Amsterdam is my number one. So I saw some critics say that the plot was a wild ride, and I don't understand because I just wanted them to get on with it. Mm. Like, like we were just talking about movies being too long, and this one wasn't as long, but I still felt it was too long. Right. If it, it's one of those movies that I think felt longer than its runtime, yeah. like, it was still pretty long anyway. But just trim your movies a little bit. Right. We move on now to the three films apiece that we expected less from in 2022, and we're pleasantly surprised with what we received on the screen. And I will get started with this one. My number three selection for movie that I expected less from in 2022. This is going to be a weird one. I think you'll Yay. you'll you'll react interestingly to this. I like weird things. My number three choice is Clerks Three. Okay. So the reason that it's on this list is my expectations were lower than they were for Clerks or Clerks 2. Because I'm sitting here thinking, 
we've been do we've been telling this story for 30 years, mm -hmm. right? Like we've been telling this story now for a long time, Kevin. Me speaking directly to my close personal yeah. friend Kevin Smith. Um, <laughs> where it's like, boy, I don't know if you know, eight, whatever, 17 years, I guess it's been since Clerks, th Clerks 2, or however long it's been, like, is this still going to work? Right. Is, is, is the Kevin Smith, not the Kevin Smith formula necessarily, but like the way Kevin Smith makes these viewers universe movies, is this right. still going to work? in 2022 turns out it does um, it, it, it still definitely worked but that was my expectation going in i was like you know what he decided to do a third one i was looking forward to it but i wasn't like i wasn't yes another clerks movie finally like i wasn't that's sad and, you know that's so sad that it. you weren't as amped it's true it's true i should i i, I probably should have been but like I was, in a weird way, I'm more amped for Mallrats 2 than I was for a really? third Clerks movie. So maybe, right. I don't know, it's it's weird, but my expectations were tepid and reserved for Clerks 3, and I was very pleasantly surprised with it. So that's my number three. Yeah, so this one isn't on mine, but it's kind of a, uh, I expected less, but hope for more. Yes. Yeah, yes. there you go. Because my thing with Kevin Smith is he's not pumping out those classics no more. Right. I mean, some people would argue that he never did. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. But not these guys. Not, no, no chance. Like, you gotta, because you gotta look at what he's done movie-wise over the years. Jane and Silent Bob reboot, fine. Right? Yeah. But I love Jane and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah. Uh, Yoga Hosers was garbage. You know, Tusk was good up to a certain point. So in a little way, I was, I was with you on this because it's like, man, his track record over the last bunch of movies hasn't been that fantastic, and now he's returning to his darling. Right. So like, that's a good pick. I am a little shocked that it was on yours because I thought you were like very gung ho. I guess I was wrong. I don't know you anymore. <laughs> so my number three movie that I expected less from is where the Crawdads sang. No, oh, nice. I, I'm keeping this very short. I didn't really want to see this. I thought it would be kind of boring, and then I watched the trailer and I thought, uh, this might be okay. And I was invested. Yeah. And the lead actress did a, did a really good job. She was, like, actually pretty perfect. Yeah. For that role in particular, and yeah, that's it. That's really all I got. I just really didn't want to see it. Right when when there's when and this and again, this is what this award is made for, yeah. right? Like you're, when your expectations are slim to nil. Yeah, it's I mean, what it's made for. So yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. I want to see a movie. Yeah, you know, there it is. That where the crawdads say. Short and simple. I like it. Yep. So my number two movie that I expected less from in 2022 is also kind of going to be a weird one, only because this movie is getting a ton of uh, backlash. Like, not, not, not backlash. I shouldn't call it backlash. You're but buckling up. They, exactly. But there's, like, I'm finding almost no one that likes this movie. Okay. So my number two selection is Fantastic Beasts 3. Okay. And here's why. Because my expectations were, like, here. Because when I watched the second one, I was like, this is not accessible to someone that is not deep cuts in lore for the Wizarding World. And that's kind of what I expected now coming into the third one. But what we got in the third one, I think the third one was the most accessible of the three of them. And it was probably my favorite of the three of them. Simply because it gave you enough self-contained in the movie that you knew exactly what was going on. You had no ambiguity about what was about what was happening and what the stakes were, what the ramifications were. I really like Mads Mikkelsen. Mads Mikkelsen was an excellent choice to yeah. take over that role because I just I like him a lot and I thought he was really good in the movie. So that made that. Uh, like, wow, I'm actually enjoying this. And then it, it was weird to come home and see people just being like, this movie is, aw it's one of the worst movies of the year and whatever. And I'm like, is this just, is this just Harry Potter fandom backlash, which I'm sure that plays a, uh, a certain role in it. But yeah, Fantastic Beasts 3 is going to be my number two because again, my expectations were here. I might've only got this, but this is higher yeah. than this. So we'll go with it.
I forgot this came out this year. I'm still not convinced that it did. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making up release dates, Justin? I really have nothing to add. Hmm. I don't watch these movies. I've never even seen a Harry Potter movie. Right, fair enough. So I got nothing. Pleb. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so my number two is Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie. Ooh. So here's the thing about me this year. I went very briefly, I went on a Ninja Turtles kick. Where I, I watched some of a couple of the animated shows that I had never seen. Because we grew up with a certain one. And I watched a few episodes of some of the ones that, you know, the kids like. Because I was, in the, I was in the Ninja Turtles mood. I read some comics. I watched the, the show that this one is based on. I guess that was also called Rides of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Because the animation looked amazing. And I hated the show. <laughs> <laughs> God, every character, they like stripped the personality out of the Ninja Turtles and made them all Michelangelo. Oh. Like they were all just cracking jokes. And I didn't mind that they, they made the weapons, like they all had like their weapons had superpowers and stuff. I didn't mind that part of it, but I just minded that, like we grew up with very specific Ninja Turtles. I'm okay with some change, but I want them to have personalities. Right. Like I was okay that Leonardo wasn't the leader in this one. Like Raphael, I think, was. Okay. I'm okay, with, I'm okay with that change, even though it's weird because we know Leo is a certain way. Right. But I don't want them all to be Michelangelo. No, that's, that that does not work. Right. So, cause I, I, I started watching in part because the movie was coming. I thought, I'm all in on a Ninja Turtles movie. I love Ninja Turtles. And I watched the movie, and I don't know if, as the show went on, if they kind of rectified the personality issue or what, because I never mm. stayed long enough because I was with three episodes deep, and I'm like, nope. It was good. <laughs> like, it wasn't great. But the problems didn't really, they didn't really bother me. It seemed like they had some personality that was more what I expect or, you know, it wasn't all, they weren't all Michelangelo, even though there was Joe Kraken and stuff. Right. But yeah, I just didn't want four Michelangelo's. No. So I expected to hate this, probably be a top five worst movies, but it wasn't. So that's good. That's the definition of this. I expected a lot less from this and ended up being like, yeah, this is pretty good. Excellent. If the rest of the show ends up being like the movie was, and I would probably end up liking the show ultimately. And my number one choice this year for a movie I expected less from in 2022 is The Lost City. Okay. The Lost City is one of the more meta movies that came out this year, at least in a, from a mainstream perspective. Because from the outside looking in, it looks like exactly what it wants you to think that it is. Okay. Which is standard kind of rom-com fare with an impossibly pretty male lead and and Sandra Bullock coming back to rom-coms for the first time in Who's also it was. still a good-looking woman. Good, still good-looking. But the movie wants you to think that that's exactly what yeah. it is. And it's and it's funny and it's meta because that's what her character is in the movie. She's a writer of what people expect to be the schlocky Harlequin style romances and as the movie unfolds you find that not only does she have more depth than that and he have more depth than that the movie in fact has more depth than that so by the end of it I'm like oh this is actually really entertaining I'm, I'm actually having a lot of fun with this when I'm sitting here expecting like I, w I went to this movie because it was something that somebody else really wanted to see. Right. So I was like, cool, we'll go to this. I, you know, I'm not expecting much. But I like I like him, and she's been good before, so we'll go see this. And I was just like, wow, this was actually a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed myself with this, and it completely subverted my expectations of it. So the pure definition of this award, and that's why Lost City is number one. You spoke on that movie very intelligently. And I... <laughs> it was a good movie. I like it. I don't have anything to really add. It was fun. I, I, I guess I expected less... Not that I loved it, but I, I guess I expected a little less, too. Yeah. Even though I like pretty much everyone involved. So yeah. Maybe I shouldn't, but that's a, that's a good one. My number one movie that I expected less from is Prey. Ooh, Be yes. Because Predator does not have a gr fantastic track <laughs> record. Why, whatever do you mean? <laughs> the first one is great. 
you know, that the most recent one from whatever year it was, was okay-ish. Here's the thing, like, I'm not, I'm not a mass, like, I like the Predator character a lot. I'm not poo-pooing on the Predator. No. The Predator is a fantastic villain. Even though I'm a Xenomorph guy. Like, I'm Team Alien. Right. <laughs> but I also really like Predator. I just, if they were to, if they were to fight, the Xenomorphs have to win. Just like, <laughs> but the movies are just kind of whatever, and, and... I, so I expected less just from that, and really, the movie, this spoils a little bit, I guess, for later, but this movie was in the running to win awards on three different categories. Wow. That it didn't. But just the fact that it was considered, you know, I didn't expect anything. I expected maybe a 6 out of 10. That's super maybe. cool. Yeah, so always good to see a, a really good Predator movie. Yeah. So that's my number one. Hollywood is better off when the Predator is successful. Exactly. Wow. Oh, God. <laughs> no, not this again! We can't do this again! <laughs> it happens the same way you say something, I don't realize it right away <laughs> until you start laughing. We move on now to a pair of brand new awards for 2022, and we're going to kick things off with my choice for the new award, which is Hollywood's Dumbest Moment of 2022, and there were a lot of them. I'm excited for this one because you have like a really good one you said. Yeah, I, I have one that I feel, I feel really, really strongly about. So this is one where we each give a winner um, for this award, and uh, since it was my choice, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna use champion's advantage here, and I'm gonna go ahead and do mine first. So my selection for Hollywood's dumbest moment of 2022 is, it only costs $90 million if you release it, you know. <laughs> So this is Warner Brothers making the decision to axe the Batgirl movie when it's basically finished. They had already invested $90 million in making this Batgirl movie and then have made the decision now not to release it anywhere ever. And it, it, and it goes deeper than that because you can say, well, yeah, sure, they decided right now that they're not going to release it, but they'll release it someday. No, no, no. The rabbit hole goes deeper than this. Yes. The consult is notes. It goes so deep. It, it's, it's, so, it's so ridiculous. So they made the statement that it, the, the axing of the movie, uh, quote, I have a quote here. <laughs> it reflects our leadership's strategic shift as it relates to the DC Universe and HBO Max. And yes, they are completely, obviously revamping yeah. what they're doing with the DC Universe. That could have been multiple different dumbest moments of 2022 <laughs> with the way that they've decided to go about changing. Henry Cavill's situation sucks. It, it's, it's ridiculous, and I hope they cut him a big, big check for that. But so uh, there's, there's multiple things and multiple elements in there that could have qualified for this. But here's where it really, it really just falls down a, a, a shit pie, is the cost of that movie, the $90 million, that money's spent, but technically it doesn't count because what they're gonna do is they're gonna use that production cost as a tax write down yeah. on other projects. And if they do that, it is literal tax fraud if they ever release that movie because they've used it as, as a tax write down against other costs. Yeah. So even if they release, they can't release it on HBO, they can't release it anywhere where it could generate revenue, which means if they do use it as a tax write down, it will never see the light of day. The only thing you could ever do is post it for free on YouTube. And if you did that, you couldn't even monetize it because that's still tax fraud. Yeah. You can't charge money for it in any way, shape, or form. But the, the sheer concept that, well, I mean, it doesn't really cost $90 million. It's not like we're going to release it. And then for, and it wasn't everyone in Hollywood. Because a lot of people in Hollywood were like, what are you, like, this was unprecedented. Yeah. Has never happened before. But there were some people in Hollywood that were just like, yes, yes, that is actually financially, that's a very smart move. <laughs> You spent 
You spend ninety million dollars on a thing that you're never, no one's ever going to see. Yeah. But it it on, it's only ninety million dollars if you actually release it. Right. Baffling, ridiculous, the dumbest moment of Hollywood in twenty twenty two. All right, so two things. Okay. I don't got a whole lot to add, but two things. One, I considered this whole Warner Brothers thing in general for mine this year, yeah. so I'm glad I didn't pick it. I didn't feel smart enough to talk about it. Like, I wouldn't have been able to talk about it at the same level as you, so I didn't pick it. Second, I don't have the... It's, it, all, it may have been Hollywood's dumbest moment to you, but it also spawned Twitter's greatest tweet. And I don't have the exact tweet. I'm gonna. I'm just kind of paraphrasing the tweet. But some mm. dude. I'm sure it's been made by a bunch of people. But I saw this one tweet that was like, "Can't wait till the best movie of 2023 is is Batgirl. 1080p. HD <laughs> Red." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes." I'm like, "Whoever that is." I like. I paraphrase it. They they word it differently. But I'm right. like, "Whoever that is." That's, I'm like, "That's the best tweet." That's ten out of ten. That's really good. So that's really all I got to add. So. But the problem is, it's like, if that happens, can we talk about it at the movie? <laughs> or do we incriminate ourselves? Oh no. <laughs> if that happens, we're talking about it on the movie awards. <laughs> absolutely. All right, absolutely. All right uh, uh, scene groups, get on that so we can watch Batgirl. Absolutely. Somebody, somebody get a job at Warner Brothers <laughs> strictly to leak that movie. <laughs> So, okay, before I say mine, I gotta say that since this was his idea, he obviously had a good one in mind, and I wasn't paying attention to this, because you dropped this on me in, like, August. It's true. And I've been, try <laughs> I've been trying to get a good one. I don't know that this is good, but I guess we'll see how this goes. Mm -hmm. So my pick for Hollywood's dumbest moment is David Gordon Green making a Halloween movie that really isn't a Halloween movie. Yes. I'm all, I'm, I'm all for this one. Speak on it. <laughs> so you can... Okay, that movie sucks. <laughs> So okay, so here, so here's the thing. Uh, you can, you can, you can expand the Myers universe by introducing another character, like they did Corey Cunningham, I think his name is. Mm. But not like this, dude. M Michael Myers hangs out in a fucking sewer. <laughs> Why? Why is he there? <laughs> and 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 defenders like will be like, oh, it's thematically rich. Although although I don't know how many defenders there are. I've never met any. <laughs> but. Do but, they exist? We don't know. I'm sure they'd be like, oh, you just don't get it. But it's like, okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. People go to Halloween for Michael Myers. And he shows up at the end and that part's okay. Yeah. It's not great. It's not, like, it's not fantastic. Yeah, but you, you butchered My the Myers movie. It, it's, it was not a good year for IPs in that genre. Yeah, fair enough. Overall, it just wasn't. Uh, no, you you are a hundred percent right here. How how anyone could look and be like, I want to make a Halloween movie a year after the last Halloween movie that's not about Michael Myers. I know, and and I do want to say there was people harassing the actor of Corey. Don't do that. Oh no, that's don't that's, do that. That's stupid. No, 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 no. Like he ends up dying or whatever, and Spoilers. then Michael Myers is like, oh 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 shit, this is my movie. Yeah. Right! Now I can try to kill someone. How much time's left? 25 minutes? Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, like, yeah. I just, I don't understand. Like, here's the thing. I'm not, like, a, I'm not a gigantic Halloween fan. I really, I really like the first, like, first Carpenter one. Yeah. And I even kind of liked the, like, the first one of this trilogy. I didn't think it was amazing, but it was pretty mm -hmm. good. Like, yeah. I liked it. I had my problems with it. And then, like, the second one was, like, eh. I don't think I really liked it that much, but it was okay. And this one's just like, stop. There's things, like, things are the way they are for a reason. You don't, you don't gotta switch it up to be like subversive. Like, oh, look at my Michael Myers movie, that, my Halloween movie that doesn't have Michael Myers in it, except for in a sewer, just standing there. I could have went with like bigger issues because I did have a few other ones. Right. That I could have went with that were more like akin to yours, a bigger issue within the industry. But when it came down to it, when I'm making my list, I'm like, I don't, I, none of that annoys me. <laughs> as much as this creative decision. So the award that I chose this year was Best Cinematic Beatdown. Now, it doesn't say fight scene. It can be a beatdown in any way. I gotta, I gotta point this out. It can be, you know, an emotional beatdown on the viewer. <laughs> it, it, it could be a fight scene in a movie. It could be whatever. It, we could stretch this thing as long as it's in movies and it's a beatdown of some sort. Okay. I like it. Okay, so my pick comes from the black phone and it's Gwen Telenoff Jesus. 
<laughs> I love this pick. I love this so much. Like, I thought I would go with maybe something like from the Batman, because like some really good fight scenes in that that I just think are some of the best of the year. Like, they're short, but they're like, oh yeah, mm, Batman. Mm. But, man, that scene... Okay, so she's... So, for some context... She basically prays, I think, a few times throughout the movie. I think that's like a at least thing twice. She does, and then like all this stuff's going because like her brother's been kidnapped or whatever. And she's just praying to try to get him back, and then eventually she's just fed up. So she like sits down to pray. And she goes, "Jesus, what the fuck?" Yeah, rails on him for a little while, and then I think ends it with something like, "Maybe you aren't real." Yeah, right. So she just verbally abuses Jesus, but why it wins? It's because, like, any great beatdown, it goes completely unanswered. Yes, it's true. There it is. I, oh, I like that a lot. That's such a great way to look at that award. Thanks. That's super good, because I made it. You know, yeah, there you go, exactly. <laughs> it better be good. In, I... in the same way that I kind of, I guess, had the advantage in the yeah. one that I chose, obviously you kind of, you sort of had something like that in mind, or, or just a, the, the concept that, like, hey, we can stretch the definition of beat down. But I love that. Also, That's I'm not, great... not anti-religious, by the way. No, I'm no, from no. a religious house. But, <laughs> it's, but to, to, to contextualize it that way and go, like, no, this is a verbal beat down of a deity. Yeah. Yeah. So I did go more literal on this award um, than, like, just sort of more literal with the concept of beat down. But I didn't just look for the best fight scene of the year because this is definitely not the best fight scene of the year yeah. when you say the word beat down to me i think of okay a beat down is completely one-sided yeah and to your point it goes on it, it completely it, unanswered. It, it, it finishes and it's done yeah so to me the best cinematic beat down of 2022 is the something about christmas time scene from violent night Okay. So, Violent Night is a David Harbour um, Christmas movie where he is he plays the role of Santa, and he's visiting uh, a house for some very a very 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 rich family, and the family gets like home invaded by these basically you know trained uh, militia group, um, multiple trained militia groups in fact, and he as Santa has to save the day, and it seems like that sounds like a terrible movie. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> it, it might be the best Christmas movie ever made. Uh, but in this Woo! movie... <laughs> yeah, there you go. That was that for a claim. Wow! But in this movie, there is one particular scene where David Harbour finally just almost goes feral and says, like, okay, there is one way out of this, and it is forward. <laughs> and there, there, it's a scene that takes place in a barn. So he's like he's like Batman. He's using the darkness to yeah. his advantage. Oh, yeah, I remember the scene now. I was right? trying to think so, of which one it was. And, okay. and this is a completely one-sided beatdown of these, you know, random, nameless uh, militia folks. But in the background, the song, Something About <laughs> Christmas Time, yeah. is playing while yeah. he's like fashioning a shiv out of a candy cane <laughs> and stabbing a guy in the neck. Makes you wish it was Christmas every day. <laughs> he throws a bomb at the end of it, and that's, and that's the trailer moment where he's like, no, I have to watch this, and he turns around and the grenade explodes, and he's like, okay, and then walks away. That's like the tail end of this scene. And it was the most one-sided, just absolute physical beatdown that I saw on film this year. When I saw this scene completely apropos of nothing, I was like, there's my beatdown. <laughs> like there, there it is right there. So it's Santa Claus versus nameless militia <laughs> folks from Violent Night with something about Christmas time playing in the background. Okay, so my memory's bad. Mm -hmm. So does does that scene also get punctuated when he walks out of the building and the, and the one guy's like, oh, Jesus Christ. He's like, nope, just jolly old Satan. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> and then Perfect. He, throw, he throws a knife or something <laughs> at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the second best line in the movie. The first one is also like a beat down in his own way because it's such a good line. It just beats. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Delivered perfectly. All right. So now we move on to the most important award. We go to the Castle Award. Which I've given ever since I got Castle. It's just best, basically just best 
funny in a movie or bunny dumb. It, it's it's it can be philosophical and stuff. It it I stretch awards a lot, like yeah. best cinematic beat down, I stretch things out. And by the way, there has never been a more eclectic award. We'll get we're gonna get to this. That's ever been given. We're gonna get to this. We're gonna, we're, just, right. we're gonna get to this. Sorry, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I know, I'm glad. Guessing. I'm glad because honestly, I know that people are probably like, people probably sit there being like, he's giving out awards to buddies. And like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I am. And in fact, I will make you listen to this for 30 minutes. <laughs> no, don't like it. Make your own awards. <laughs> <laughs> like we did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. I will say though, this year. It was a lot harder than I wanted it to be for okay. me. I was actually a little distraught. I was like, oh my god, this award of all the awards? Right. So I was going to... All right, so like I said, I'm going to read a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I was going to originally give this to Dog with Channing Tatum. Mm -hmm. Because the Castle Award doesn't just represent bunnies and films. It branches out. It represents philosophies and things deeper in general art and how it influences people and culture. Possibly above all, all else, it represents companionship. Not just with art, but with animals. It acknowledges that even though it is born of a love between man and bun, people <laughs> people can find companionship with whatever animal they choose. And many do, so they should be represented in cinema. So I was going to go with dog. But then at the final hour, a new challenger arrived. Violent Night. And you, 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 you queued this up, and you didn't even know. Wow. There's, a, there's a stuffed bunny. That the little girl gets from Santa because when she was little she said she missed having a friend. Oh. I don't have any friends so I can relate to this. Jo Justin is just an AI. <laughs> so the stuffed bunny be becomes her best friend. So I award Violent Night this award on the grounds of like a Christmas miracle. And that's uh, that's it. So I, I can't list all. Like I've given it. He, there's a reason he says it's such an eclectic award because it's been given on the grounds of so many things that I've said in a previous year that it's, it not only measures the industry it's, it's like the industry standard for measuring success and the most versatile award in movie history it's both those things still and I'm just expanding it with a Christmas miracle Violent Night I, you, could, you could never have told me that Violent Night would have won this I didn't go into this expecting a castle award nominee or winner right i didn't i was like and then the bunny shows up i'm like huh <laughs> like a stuffed bunny I, I can still give it to a bunny but i also wanted to acknowledge don because that was too good not to acknowledge i can see the look on your face when that happens <laughs> because all it is is one eyebrow goes up <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> I love that you mentioned Violent Night or like before, and that's why like off camera because I know we'll make it. I'm just like, let me go next. Look, what we strive to do in these awards is bring joy, <laughs> right? Yeah. And nothing brings joy <laughs> every year like the Castle Award. <laughs> Yes! I love that I'm glad, I'm glad so that you much. enjoy it, because I'm always unsure what people actually think about it. I, it doesn't matter. I, all that matters is what I, you and I think about it, and that is a stroke of genius. <laughs> we move on now to my long-running award, which is Justin's award for... I don't get it. There's a movie every year that I'm just sitting here, and maybe it's because I'm an old man, who knows, <laughs> but I'm just like, I don't get it, and it's not that I don't understand the movie, but it's, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see clearly what everyone else is seeing here. Now, before I give my pick, Tyler would like the floor. I have a shirt for this occasion, before I even know what it is. I oh. hope the camera picks it up, but I got this. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm probably going to put the hoodie back on. <laughs> We got, we got the, the fight. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but it's poorly drawn lines with the mouse wanting to fight. <laughs> I got that for, I don't look good in white, so I'm probably not going to keep this. Oh my goodness. But I will wear it for the rest of this award. All right, I'm, I'm the editor, so I might just take a picture of this and just throw it up over this just to make sure. I, like, I don't even know if we're going to fight. I just... <laughs> it has to be I just prepared. wanted to be prepared in case we do. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm glad that landed. Oh my god. My selection in 2022 for my I 
I don't get it award is everything everywhere all at once. Let's go. So I respect this movie for its artistic vision, for the level of absurdity that it is willing to go to. I respect this movie on a lot of grounds. Performance wise, like there's a lot of things about this movie that I respect. But what I don't get is I don't get the sheer volume of love that this particular movie is getting. It feels like one of those movies that is literally something different to every single person that watches it. So is it indeed everything, everywhere, all at once? And is something different to every single person and is that why it's getting the amount of universal, like, and when I talk about universal praise, I talk about, like, top one to two to three favorite movies, best movies of the year on almost, like, you go across the board. Like, it's on almost everyone's list. Almost every best movie list that I've come across since, like, the beginning of December has everything everywhere on it somewhere and in most cases it's like top two top three like oh my god this is one of the greatest things i've ever seen so just the the sheer volume of love that this is getting i don't understand it i just don't get it so that's going to be a contentious pick because there's a lot of people that absolutely love this movie but everything everywhere all at once is my choice for <clears throat> i don't get it that is a contentious one I, I try to look at this on the grounds of what you're saying and not necessarily on my opinion on a movie. Mm -hmm. I guess I can see what you're saying. I'm trying to think if I agree or not. I guess, I guess I kind of agree with this. It's not as great as people think it is. Uh, there, there is a movie in there at times that is as great mm -hmm. as people say it is, but it's not there all the time. Right. There are moments... Especially when it really kicks it up a notch mm -hmm. and starts going insane, like really truly insane, then I think there is a really exciting film in there that is doing something really cool with like some fun action scenes and blah 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 blah. But then there are also parts where I'm just kind of like, eh. so on that grounds, yeah, yeah, I guess I don't get it. I don't, I don't get how this can be a number one movie of the year. Is all I'm saying. Mm. I can totally get how it can be in a top thirty like we do. I can even get how it can be in a top 20. Mm -hmm. I could even get a top 15. I can't get top 5. But it is interesting that a movie this weird does kick it into the mainstream like it has. Right. Or I guess mainstream. I don't know how I don't know how it did like No, it's pretty wise, but yeah. but just the fact that there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, and you know, they're not necessarily massive film buffs, right? That that shirt bit it might be the best bit that we've ever done. <laughs> it didn't, it, it, I don't know how well you see it, though. It sucks, but I guess, like you said, we can put the shirt up. And the final two awards in the miscellaneous section here are the one movie apiece that we can't believe we loved as well as can't believe we hate it. We're going to kick things off with the movie that we can't believe that we loved in 2022. So my pick for I can't believe I loved is... R, 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 or triple R, or whatever. Ooh, okay. So this is of interest to us, because I, to, to those who won't know, I keep track of the, the data of the movie awards, and I don't think we've ever included a movie made in India. No, I, we probably have We've probably had movies with, you know, actors from India and whatever, but I don't know if we've ever made one actually made in Bollywood. Although, I gotta say something, I don't know much about it. You know, cinema from India. I just learned that this was actually made in Tollywood. I don't know what that is. <laughs> no, I don't. I have no idea what the difference is. Don't come at me because I'm showing love to a culture, a film culture that I'm not super well viewed on. Like I've seen some, but I. So we're we're. I'm just gonna say probably Bollywood, but I understand. Don't don't come at me. I guess I just didn't really know what to expect. I suppose from this, and then I just kind of watched it because I think I saw people saying that it was actually like really cool, mm -hmm. and it was 
really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like epic. Like I think it was even like three hours or something like that. Mm-hmm. Which you can do a three hour movie, man. Man, but you've got to come at it with super fun, super fun fight scenes. But then some heart, a story that I cared about, characters I care about, musical numbers that I didn't hate. Because I'm not like a big musical person, so that's part of the reason why I don't often gravitate t- towards Bollywood. Because I know there's like a lot of musical numbers. I know yeah. it's of great importance to them. I know that they judge movies based on how strong the musical numbers are. Like I understand it's like very culturally important. It ain't to me. Right. But even the music was fun in this, so I'm going to say, like, I never expected at all to be put in a movie, like, to love a movie like this. Like, I do. It's such a great movie. Oh, that's so And, and I'm not original in this. There's so many critics and stuff that put this on their list. This isn't, this isn't original to me. I'm not being like, hey, you should check out this unknown. Very cool. I, I really, I love that pick. Because that's, like, that feels like the very definition of the award. Yeah. That it kind of comes out of... Not just the movie itself comes out of nowhere, but the entire, like the entire industry behind making that movie, yeah. comes out of nowhere for you, and, and that's that's very cool. I India's like that on the board. On the board. My selection in 2022 for the movie that I can't believe I loved, because so I want you to think about just a little background here. In the last 12 years of us doing this, I've watched. Well over a thousand movies. Yes. Well over a thousand. And it blows my mind that in 2022, a 36 year sequel ah. to yeah. a Tom Cruise movie that was once dubbed by Kevin Smith and Quentin Tarantino as one big 90 minute long gay joke. <laughs> it's crazy to me that the sequel to that movie would be a movie that I would absolutely fall in love with, and I did. Top Gun Maverick, which just took the box office by storm. Everything by storm. It took everything, exactly. took everything by storm. It was everything everywhere all at once. It was. And and to think, like, this this is, for all intents and purposes, almost the exact same movie. It's, it's yeah. a big, jingoistic, strong American boys versus nameless, definitely not Russian antagonists. But I like I like that it doesn't name it, though. I, I, I kind of do, too, because it's, like, it was very obvious, and it, it's, it's a product of the time when both of these movies were made, right? It was a product of, like, let's not make things worse. <laughs> and and it's, it's the same deal. Like, it's, they're, they're nameless for a reason. Yeah. There, there's... So much about this that would, like, on paper, you would look at it and go, boy, like, I don't know about this, but it was so good. (laughs) Stupid (laughs) movie was so good. Uh, And and it was, I I couldn't believe, as, like, 20 minutes into this, I'm like, I love this movie. I love this movie already, and I can't believe it. And that's why it held on all year long, and it's my movie that I can't believe I love. I love the pure passion. I sense the pure passion for that you have for this movie. Absolutely. And that's great. I'm glad that you really liked it. Yeah. I had fun with it, which is more than I expected, because I haven't seen the first one. Right. And don't want to. <laughs> and we close the video with one movie apiece that we can't believe we hated in 2022, and we're going to give Tyler the floor. I mean, mine's a little, mine's sad for me. Uh, mine is Memoria. Oh, yes. Okay. So I'm not even going to pretend that I can pronounce the director, but he made Uncle Boon Me, who can recall his past lives, and Tropical Malady, which is, like, one of my favorite foreign movies of all time. I don't know where it lands, like, my top 30 of all time, but it's in there somewhere. Um, I never expected to hate this, anything this guy did. Yeah, and it's a director, uh, you know, expectation there where like this was a this was a movie that had a weird release. Um, it was like filming. It was only being shown in film festivals, but it was like traveling, you know. So oh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. So I didn't actually know if I'd get to see it. But I will say this: this is one of the movies that's like I did see it on the internet because I was like I'm not gonna be able to go to like a film festival to see it, and I kind of wish I hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I would have followed my instinct on yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so like this is such a downer, but 
I really like this director and think he's one of the most inventive foreign directors. And then he does this turd, Ugh. and I'm not pleased with him. <laughs> Straighten up and fly right. Yeah, please. <laughs> It would be the equivalent of, like, I don't know, Denny Villeneuve making a yeah. stinker for me, and I'd be like, what What happened? Yeah. What are you doing? I don't like this multiverse. I want to go back to the... <laughs> exactly. Which multiverse did I fall into, and how can I get back to the one where I was at, where he was making nothing but bangers? <laughs> Tyler just said something off screen that I thought was really interesting, and I'm going to reiterate it here and leave it in in the edit. He said, for this award, that it's kind of the nature of the award, that it's something that you're super passionate about. I don't necessarily think my pick for this is going to fall into that. Okay. Because it's not something that I was super passionate about. But it was something that had enough good about it recently that I was shocked at the lack of quality for what we saw this year. My selection for I Can't Believe I Hate It in 2022 is Halloween Ends. I can't believe that, like, just, just last year, we got a movie with Halloween Kills that isn't a great movie, isn't even necessarily a good movie, but had enough good about sure, it. Sure. And had enough interesting things about it. It had modest momentum coming off of that movie. And I thought, wow, we're going to get another one already. Let's see how it can carry the momentum that it just had from a year ago. And how it continues that momentum forward. And how it chose to do that was to make one of the most disappointing immediate sequels that I can think of in, in like, the modern, in the last five years yeah. of me watching movies. I'm trying to think of another sequel that disappointed me as hard as this one did. Yeah. Like, again, with Halloween Kills, you're looking at a movie that had... At least some cool ideas, even if it didn't go to extreme lengths to explore them. Yeah. You had the quality of kills, which I thought increased a lot from the previous one. The kills were at least interesting and were like felt valid and felt like they had some kind of logic behind them. Even within horror movies, which is a dicey road as it is. But in general, it had enough about it that didn't suck. And then I watched this movie, and I'm like, almost everything about this movie sucks. <laughs> like, I don't care about this uh, social outcast, comma, becomes serial killer male archetype. No. Like, it, just, it, it felt so hollow and so unearned, and just, yeah. there was so much about it that, like, in a different movie, maybe... Maybe this would have wound up just being a mediocre, middle-of-the-year horror or whatever. Yeah. But you put Halloween in that title, yeah. where's my Halloween movie? Where's my movie about Michael Myers? And that's just, you, it's such an interesting choice to say, I'm going to make a Halloween movie, and only about 20% of it's actually going to be about Michael Myers. And the part that is about Michael Myers feels unsatisfactory because you haven't had... Yeah the previous hour and 15 minutes building up to whatever denouement you're going to have. Anyway, I'm sure this movie will be talked about again, but um, as it stands right now, I can't believe I hated Halloween Ends. And Halloween Ends, thank God. Please don't make another <laughs> one of these. Like, that's it. If Halloween's over, then Halloween's over. Wait 15 years and reboot it again so everybody can get the bad taste out of their mouth. I, I am like so I'm so surprised how much we've talked about how we ends <laughs> yeah, already. Yeah, it's true. For one, yeah. Two, you made a good point there where you said if this wasn't a Halloween movie and it was just Corey's, you know, descent into serial killerdom. Right. Um, it would be a middle of the road. I I don't know. I think you said like middle of the road or something yeah. like that horror movie. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, this movie would have been improved by not being a Halloween movie. One hundred percent. Not that it would have been great, but it would have been like ah, eh, serviceable. Right. If this movie would have come out October first without Halloween on it, it could. You literally yeah. could have called it like Corey's Bizarre Adventure yeah. or whatever. Like yeah. just like, call it whatever you want. Just don't call it a Halloween yeah, no, movie no because ties it's not to Halloween. Just be like this is an original 
thing of this guy that just becomes a serial killer. It actually would have been, like, okay. Yeah. Because you can't separate yourself from the fact that you're sitting there expecting Michael Myers. Right. As a matter of fact, if you'll recall back to last year's awards, there's a movie like that, and it was in my top oh, yeah. 30. It's called yeah. Killer Therapy. Yeah. 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 That's basically what that movie is. So it can be done. You literally just saw it last year. It's like somebody watched that movie and said, I'm going to make that movie, but I'm going to make it Michael Myers. There you have it, folks. Those are our miscellaneous awards for 2022, the ninth lineal Justin and Tyler Movie Awards. Movies that we can't believe we loved, can't believe we hated, expected more, expected less, the cinematic beatdown of the year, Hollywood's dumbest moment in 2022, I don't get it. And the Castle Award, which is, as always, the main event of the show. And we are going to move on now to our people section of the Justin and Tyler Movie Awards, which is going to be our best actors, best actresses, and best directors of 2022. Those will probably each be their own individual videos. So we'll catch you on the next video, which should be coming up right now. Oh.